outside, outliers. 1975 marked the last official national census, a sleight of hand which depicted as much as it demarcated. Accelerating urbanization, muddied outliers, the flight within and between borders, the aggrieved aching stretch between the settled and the nomadic, the aggregated centers and the rippling dispersal, always out of sight, always afoot. The year of arrested growth and bitter desiccation was also the year of the family law and the land law, the nightmare of the polygamist and the desire of the capitalist, hearth and home and horror. We had it all until we didn't. The census was held during an abar, one of the grimmest droughts in the young country's history. Conductors trekked the northern highlands, the settlements edging the Jubba and Shabele rivers, the rural backwaters inhabited by a smattering of transient populations. In search of water and sustenance for their children and animals, the abar had propelled many into desperate motion, into another kind of scattering. Enumerators struggled against this heightened state of flux, trying to capture this errantry, to count the restless flock, to bestow the unwanted gift of legibility upon the people. They were not seeking clarity, only a refracted chink of purpose, the telos of nation, the polity of innocence. Movement was negation, a primitive hesitance to accept what the lettered and learned foisted upon one's own cosmology. Movement as the skepticism of the faithful, as practice refusal, we are African because we are always moving, being made to move, being moved on and over. In the years that followed, other censuses were conducted. Their findings never published. The 80s were a decade of entrenchment, the clan a body of myth and mystification that ballooned, swelling with its own contradictions. Its limbs atrophied, but still, we carried it over our shoulders, passed the effigy on like dutiful non-citizens. During that time, conductors were suspected to have exaggerated the size of their own clans. Some say government officials were shocked to discover the true numbers of minoritized groups and the disquieting possibility that their powerful clans were, in fact, statistical minorities. Legitimacy is disputed. Our current state is its refutation. There is no way to determine which tribal affiliations, ethno-nationalisms, linguistic patterns or territorial claims constitute an incontestable majority. The fraught political system hinges on the representation of all major clans on a patch of land where everyone thinks they are the majority. Men lie, women lie, numbers don't, until they do. The ripping up of land tenure and enshrinement of dispossession was also the year of the rural literacy campaign. Take with one hand, teach with the other. My city bred father sent to the hinterlands with a duffel bag full of thumbed through textbooks. The soft implosions of his breathing as a teenage lion, a male, poured the thatch fronds of the hut he slept in. The nights were agonizingly long. The nomads laughed at these sons of Red Sea traders and policemen, so detached from their milk memoried origin stories. Possessors of weak stomachs and weaker dispositions, educated in the classrooms of former fascists, they had the audacity to be startled by the staccato of hyenas. 4.5, they formulated their monomania, portioned the system of recognition by way of home office, school gates, bus rides, supermarket doorways, bailiff and bystander. We come to know ourselves through their miscalculations. We misplaced the house keys we stole, shudder with abasement, lose the meticulously cultivated distance we wrung in the basin of the Indian Ocean a distance from the abyss of Africanity, a distance from what, we can, what can be confined but never repressed, pursued but never outrun. At night, we slept better. By day, the hyenas laughed. <laughs>